talk about urinary disorders. These are very common conditions which affect the urinary system. And when you talk about urinary system, it includes the bladder, the urethra, the, the ureters, the urethra, and also the kidneys at some point. So when we talk about the urinary system, we are talking about the kidneys, the bladder, the ureters, uh, and uh, the urethra. So the, the kidneys uh, have their functions and in our previous video we've shared a lot about uh, about it. Uh, kindly if you have not seen uh, or, uh, or watched the video, I want to encourage you guys to, to check on it because it has some information also. We talked in our previous video also about the urinary tract infections. Those are the infections which affect the urinary system. Also, you can check on it. So, when we talk about urinary disorders, we are talking about the variance uh, in which, and uh, we are talking about the severity, and uh, this may be different depending on the causative uh, uh, thing. So, underlying causes uh, of these uh, common urinary disorders they include the urinary tract infections, and that is number one cause of the urinary disorders. So, you, or what you call, commonly known as UTIs. UTIs are bacterial infections that can affect any part of the urinary system, and uh, including the bladder. It, when it is in the bladder, we call it cystitis, uh, the urethra, and when it is in the urethra, we call it uh, urethra, uh, urethritis. And also in the kidney, when it is there, there we call it uh, pyonephritis. Uh, and also when it is uh, in the when it is in the when it is in the bladder, we call it also cystitis. cystitis guys. So these are very common conditions. Uh, when we have those infections, in that particular in the urethra, in the urethra, in the kidneys, in the in the bladder, we call it different names. I've said in the bladder, we call it cystitis. In the urethra, we call it urethritis. In the kidneys, we call it pyonephritis, uh, guys. So with the, when one has UTI affecting those various areas, uh, we have symptoms like uh, frequent urination. We have uh, burning or uh, pain during urination. We have cloudy uh, or false smelling urine and also at some point we have a, we have a pelvic uh, discomfort or pain. Number two uh, uh, common urinary disorder we have is uh, what we call uh, kidney stones. I don't know if you have ever heard of kidney stones guys. So kidney stones are very common and when we talk about kidney stones we are talking about kidney stones are hard mineral uh, deposits uh, which form in the kidneys and when they form they cause severe pain when they pass through the urinary tract so these actually are, for, are formed in the in the in the kidney in the uh, the deposits of uh, these uh, minerals are deposited in the kidneys and uh, these are always the these are where kidney gets clearance or gets to uh, eject the, those uh, problem those uh, stones from the from the urethra, so normally when it it passes to the uh, through the when it passes through the urinary tract, it is very 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 painful. So symptoms may include sharp pain in the backside or side, low abdominal pain, also blood in the urine, and also we have nausea and vomiting when one has a kidney uh, kidney stones. We have uh, number three, what we call urinary incontinence. When we talk about uh, urinary incontinence, we are, we, are we, are, we are referring to an involuntary leakage of urine, which can occur during uh, uh, activities such as uh, when coughing, sneezing, laughing, or physical exertion. So you can imagine when you are, uh, <coughs> you are uh, sneezing and uh, the urine is coming out, or when you are laughing and the urine is coming out, 
so normally we call that uh, urinary incontinence and also it can result from weakened pelvic muscles, nerve damage, hormonal changes or other underlying conditions. Number four uh, is about the uh, video I did previously, I will attach it here, about when we talk about overactive bladder or OAB, which is a condition characterized by sudden and uncontrollable urge to urinate, often accompanied by uh, frequent urination and nocturia, that is uh, waking up at night to urinate, and nerve damage. Uh, it may be caused by, it is uh, mainly caused by bladder muscle dysfunction and uh, nerve damage or other factors. Number five is about what you call interstitial uh, cystitis or stroke bladder pain syndrome. It is called in short IIS, stroke uh, PPS, interstitial cystitis, stroke bladder pain uh, syndrome, IC stroke PPS, is a chronic bladder condition characterized by bladder pain and uh, urinary urgency, frequency and also nocturia. The exact cause is unknown but it may involve uh, inflammation of the bladder, uh, lining or abnormalities in the bladder wall. So we have what you call IC stroke BPS, interstitial, interstitial cystitis or bladder pain uh, syndrome as a, as a disorder of the urinary uh, system. Number six, we have urinary retention as also a disorder. When we talk about urin urinary retention, we are talking about uh, it occurs when the bladder does not uh, uh, empty completely, like when you are voiding, there is some urine which remains in the bladder, so we call that urine retention, uh, leading to persistent urge to urinate. And when that urine remains in the bladder, there is that always that urge to urinate. But when one tries to urinate, the urine it can't empty the, the bladder completely. So this may result from obstructions of the urinary tract and also nerve damage or weakened uh, bladder muscles uh, depending on the cause. Number seven is about what you call BPH uh, or what you call benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia commonly known as BPH. Uh, I've also done a video on BPH. Kindly if you have not uh, watched it, I want to encourage you to watch uh, what BPH means or you, what uh, benign prostate hyper, hyperplasia means, PPH. So it's an uncancerous enlargement of the prostate actually from the definition and that uh, prostate gland that can obstruct the flow of the urine to the bladder. With the, the patient uh, normally expresses themselves with the, <coughs> with the complaints of uh, 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 weak urine stream difficulty in starting or stopping urination and in complete bladder emptying at that particular point. Also, we have uh, urinary tract obstruction, that's number eight. Urinary tract obstructions occur when there is blockage in the urinary system, preventing the normal flow of the urine. So when there is that uh, prevention or uh, obstructing the flow of urine, it may be caused by the kidney stones tumors, enlarged prostate, and uh, urethral strictures or other conditions. So urinary tract obstruction is also a urinary disorder which is very common. Number nine, we are talking about urinary fistulas. And when we talk about urinary fistulas, usually fistulas are uh, spaces uh, which are abnormal, abnormal, abnormal spaces or abnormal tears. So urinary fistulas are abnormal connection between urinary tract and adjacent organs. So when there is a, a, a space or a, a, a tear on the urinary system, it's connecting to the other part of the, of the near organs. Like when we have uh, uh, such as the vagina, the rectum, and also the skin connection to the urinary system. So they can, this can result in leakage and also result in recurrent uh, urinary tract infection and also other complications. Number 10 is about neurogenic bladder as a disorder of the urinary. 
we have uh, neuro when we talk about neurogenic bladder is a dysfunction of the bladder due to ne neurological conditions or injuries when one has injuries to the bladder so we have uh, neurogenic uh, bladder the uh, this may be caused uh, by the injuries such as spinal cord injury multiple sclerosis uh, or a stroke uh, so it may cause uh, it may cause the urinary irritation urinary incontinence or a combination of both where a patient has both urinary retention urinary incontinence or a combination of both so treatment of uh, on the treatment of uh, uh, of these uh, disorders it, it varies from specific condition and it is underlying cause so it may include uh, lifestyle modifications there are those which need just a uh, lifestyle of, uh, modification pelvic floor exercises like in a previous video i have talked about uh, how to, to do those uh, pelvic floor exercises and also bladder training very important surgical interventions also can be can be introduced at uh, that particular point and also we have uh, 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 other therapies aimed at managing uh, the symptoms and improving uh, the bladder function. So prompt medical evaluation and treatment are essential for diagnosis and the management of uh, the urinary tract and effectively uh, to manage uh, such kind of uh, conditions of the uh, urinary tract, uh, tract infections or urinary disorders. Yes, guys, when we talk about uh, the management of various uh, urinary uh, tract disorders, so the management normally depends on the, the causative and uh, we have around 10 mechanisms which are used to manage uh, the urinary disorders. And uh, number one, like uh, for treatment of... Uh, urinary disorders uh, is about medications uh, so medications depending on the type of the urinary disorder involved so special medications are introduced to alleviate the conditions as appropriate so and manage the underlying conditions or prevent uh, further complications example include antibiotics for urinary tract infections uh, we have alpha and also we have uh, alpha blockers or 5-alpha reductase uh, inhibitors for benign uh, prostate hypertrophy for PPH. We have anticholinergic medications for the overactive uh, bladder. And like I told you, I've shared a video on overactive uh, bladder and its management and its cause kindly go and watch that video it's very informative it's well done and very clear so also we have analgesics for kidney stones so for pain we manage it accordingly so also depending on the causative like now when we have uh, which uh, the, the conditions which are uh, predisposed one to lifestyle uh, modifications like making lifestyle changes can help manage certain urinary disorders and improve uh, overall bladder health. And when we talk about this, this may include avoiding bladder irritants such as ca caffeine and alcohol at that, uh, at that particular point and the spicy food. Also maintaining a healthy weight through exercise and also uh, staying hydrated, that's checking a good amount of water to cater for the need the needs of the body as appropriate also we have uh, uh, avoiding constipation which can exacerbate uh, the, the urinary uh, symptoms number three we have a pelvic floor uh, management uh, pelvic floor exercises uh, the pelvic floor exercises also known as kegel exercises they can strengthen the muscle that control the bladder function and improve the urinary incontinence. These exercises are, these exercises are very important, particularly uh, and beneficial to individuals with urinary incontinence 
or a pelvic floor uh, dysfunction. Uh, number four is about what we call bladder training. And when we talk about bladder training techniques, which uh, the techniques which can help uh, uh, with the overactive bladder, that is uh, OAB, or urinary agency, frequency, uh, regain control over the bladder function. This may involve by scheduling the voiding pattern, gradual increase in the time between bathroom visits, and also using relaxation techniques to delay the urination. Also, number five, we have surgical interventions. In some cases, surgical procedures may be necessary to alleviate uh, these kind of uh, problems. In some cases, uh, like uh, issues like uh, uh, when uh, one has kidney stones, they have to be removed. And also if one has fistulas, they have to be repaired. Uh, to relieve the urinary tract uh, obstructions or correct the anatomical abnormalities such as when we have pelvic organ uh, prolapse which can also be a big problem. Number six, which is a common practice in the hospital, we talk about catheterization where a special, uh, uh, a special pipe is put through the urethra to the, <coughs> to the bladder to, to relieve uh, uh, or to get the urine out from the from the blood. So catheterization we used as a temporary or long-term solutions. We have patients who are put on long-term use of the catheter depending on the condition or when we have what you call neurogenic uh, blood. It involves in studying uh, in, in, in the in the studying the and finding out what the cause is and also the, this, the, when we talk about catheterization, we have inserting a, a, that tube into the bladder to drain urine and they also relieve the symptoms as appropriate, which are urinary symptoms. Number seven is about behavioral therapy. When we talk about behavioral therapy, we are talking about thera techniques such as uh, biofeedback or bladder training, bladder retraining which may be helpful for individuals with urinary disorders related to pelvic floor uh, dysfunction, uh, also in neurogenic uh, blood and also psychological uh, factors. So there is a need to adjust the behavior of the particular patient in uh, that particular time. Number eight, we have nerve stimulation. When we talk about nerve stimulation, nerve stimulation therapy such as sacro neuro Modulation or percutaneous uh, tibial nerve stimulation is used. So where, or what we call P PTNS, can help modulate the bladder function. We have special way in which those nerves which have a problem are activated or, acti or uh, stimulated to, give, uh, uh, to relieve the symptoms and improve the urinary symptoms in certain cases, of the, especially when we have overactive bladder or the urinary retention. Also, fluid management is very important at that this particular time, and this is where now we get to introduce or manage uh, in nocturia, that is uh, urination at night, and also urinary incontinence. Here, managing fluid intake, particularly in the evenings, can help reduce the uh, nighttime urination and improve the quality uh, of the sleep. So there is a way one is taught. Towards the evening, you reduce the amount of uh, fluids you take and also uh, how to program yourself to uh, when to go to the, to the toilet. Number 10 is about complementary and alternative therapies. Some individuals may find a relief from urinary symptoms of the urinary symptoms through complementary and also alternative, uh, alternative therapies where professionals may, may be included trying to find alternatives for for the same here we use what you call say, things like your acupuncture herbal remedies they are there and dietary supplements which can be used to be to improve though i am of uh, the opinion that this uh, especially when we talk about alternative therapies they should be scientifically proven and also uh, and also uh, proven under no reason under reasonable doubt no reasonable doubt 
that they really help the patient because sometimes they may bring more harm than good. So guys, it is important for individuals for, with the urinary tract infections yeah, disorders to work closely with the healthcare providers to develop personalized treatments to their specific needs and uh, circumstances. So regular medical monitoring, follow-ups so like I always tell you are essential in the assessments and also getting what is very effective at that particular time and adjustments according to the need to optimize the bladder health and also overall uh, uh, well-being. Uh, what are the complications of urinary disorders? Complications associated with the urinary, urinary, uh, with the urinary system can vary depending on the condition and the severity. So I'm going to give you some potential complications that may arise from that. Number one is about kidney damage, it's very common. Untreated disorders such as urinary tract uh, infections, such as uh, the UTIs, or kidney stones can lead to kidney damage or, infection, or infections, what we call pyonephritis. Chronic urinary retention or obstructions may also uh, impair kidneys over, over time. So recurrent, uh, recurrent infections also come up. With individuals with uh, urinary disorders, it may predispose them to the recurrent uh, urinary tract infection, which can lead to complications such as uh, kidney infections, bloodstream infections, what we call now sepsis, or recurrent bladder infections. As a complication, also we have uh, bladder dysfunction, uh, like when we have overactive bladder, interstitial, uh, interstitial cystitis, bladder pain syndrome, or urinary incontinence can affect the bladder function and also lead to uh, urinary urgency which is really affected at that Yo guys, so bladder dysfunction like when we have uh, what we call OAB that's overactive uh, bladder OAB so interstitial cystitis, bladder pain syndrome what, you, which, what I call IS, IC, BPS so or urinary incontinence can affect uh, the bladder function to lead to urinary urgency, frequency, leakage impacting the quality of life and also the psychological uh, well-being of that particular that particular pe person or patient. Also kidney stones, when the kidney stones remain untreated for a, a substantial long time, what we, we would expect is a recurrent pain. Like I told you, these kidney stones, kidney stones are very painful at some point because when they are pushed from the bladder, they are likely to go to the urinary urethra and when they refuse to come out they say it is more painful than giving birth on my mind I don't know how painful it is to give birth but when we see these things when the ladies are delivering so the ladies can tell us the labor pains how it is so that pain is more intense they say more than the labor pains so when the kidney stones are, uh, occur so the, we have uh, urinary obstructions, we can have uh, kidney damage, we can also have uh, recurrent uh, pain, and also this can cause uh, the kidney damage, which we, we don't intend to have at that particular point. On uh, urinary retention, also as a complication, we have chronic uh, urinary retention or incomplete bladder emptying. And this one may increase the risk of urinary tract infections, bladder stones, because those minerals now consolidate and become uh, stones there. And also, may require, this may require emergency interventions to relieve urinary obstructions. Number seven is about the comfort and the psychological well-being of that patient or that particular individual. You get that the psychological impact. Living with urinary disorder can be a very uh, have a significant psychological impact. Uh, leading to embarrassment, anxiety, depression, uh, social isolation, or reduced quality of life. Uh, fear of urinary, uh, fear of these uh, urinary problems, leads to uh, what you what it can be uh, lead to reduced uh, quality of life, anxiety, depression. So and also self esteem and also is uh, is affected. So that person normally separates himself or herself from the other people 
and now we have interpersonal relationship challenges. Also, we have a sexual dysfunction, like uh, you some urinary disorders such as erectile dysfunction or ejaculatory dysfunction may be associated with underlying medical condition affecting the urinary, uh, the urinary or reproductive system. Because of the interlinking of the urinary system and the reproductive system, so we get that this can impact the sexual function or the intimate relationship over that particular time. On uh, the complications of treatment, sometimes this treatment which uh, the patient can be put on can be very dear, can have uh, it is on uh, complications. Certain, uh, certain treatment of urinary disorder such as surgery, we know surgery has uh, the complications, they may come up with the uh, surgery. Catheterization can come up with other, other, other problems like bladder injury, urethral injury, and of course other fistulas which were not intended to be available at that particular time. So, and also being on long-term treatment of medications because also these drugs have uh, side effects. You may get uh, things like infections, bleeding, urinary retention, or adverse uh, reactions to, to medications. So guys, it is essential for individuals with the urinary disorders to seek prompt medical evaluation and appropriate management at that particular point to prevent complications because we don't want these patients to get into the complication and optimize the blood uh, health and overall well-being. Regular follow-up, if your doctor tells you kindly make a follow-up on, uh, on what you are going on, on, on the management, it's very important that uh, that particular, at that particular time you get to make a follow-up with your healthcare provider so that important monitoring symptoms, assessing treatment uh, effectiveness and addressing any concerns of the complications that may arise either from the treatment or the condition of the urinary uh, tract disorders. Guys, welcome. The, the, the channel is uh, Nazwin. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe, guys. Uh, it's very important that you, sus that you subscribe, otherwise you are missing a lot in uh, this our channel. Guys, I want to encourage you to always uh, keep in touch. Our channel is growing in a very great way. Uh, we are on a series now, I believe. Very soon we will be 10,000 subscribers. Guys, we are taking this channel to another level. If you have not interacted with us, kindly give your comments down below. And also DM us and also share on, on the details of our, which are on, in our description of the channel. And that is the way we can take this channel to the next level. Guys, I want to welcome you to the another hot uh, video coming up. Uh, peace, guys. I love you so much.